everyone so now we are going to study common source amplifier so previously we have seen in which region we have to bias the mosfet to make it work as an amplifier so that is saturation region now we will assume the biasing is such that it is working in saturation region only when there is a particular question given in front of you you will not have to find whether it is working in saturation region or not they will write down they will write down that it is working in saturation region only now we are going to study common source amplifier so you have to assume that uh, this VDD, this VDD and this V in is such that your MOSFET is working in saturation region only. So every time I will not write it, although here I will write MOS is working in saturation region. MOS is biased, MOS is biased such that it is working in saturation region. No matter whatever we study, common source amplifier, different configuration of common source amplifier, common drain amplifier, common uh, gate amplifier, cascode amplifier, every amplifier, in every amplifier, MOSFET is biased in saturation region, okay, is working in saturation region. So this we have to assume only, every time. Now, what is V in here? V in is VGG DC bias plus AC signal, VM sin omega t, right? This we can call DC signal plus small signal AC signal, right? Now we will analyze this amplifier. Why it is called common source amplifier? What is the property of common source amplifier? We shouldn't say property, but how do you get to know if it is common source amplifier? So, common source amplifier simply means input is at gate, input is at gate and output you are collecting at train that's it this is common source amplifier input at gate output at train that's it nothing that source is common nothing like that input is at gate output is at train that's it this is known as common source amplifier so now we will do the small signal analysis we will not do the dc analysis here why because we have already seen the dc analysis in assignment number four in assignment number so four we sold many questions like what, what value should be, the, what will be the value of RD to make it work in saturation region. So why did we do that there? So that you could understand how you can make the amplifier work in saturation region. So now we have done the DC analysis. We have seen the DC analysis question. We have write down the current ID equals to mu and CX W I L VGS minus VT whole square by 2. That we have already seen. DC analysis we have already seen. Now we are going to do small signal analysis only. Small signal analysis, analysis means, what do you mean by small signal analysis? AC analysis. So now we are going to do AC analysis only or you can say small signal analysis. So we will be focusing on small signal analysis only. Small signal analysis. Or AC analysis you can write. So what different we, we do in small signal analysis? What will happen? The DC will be shorted. So this VDD will be shorted. VDD will be shorted. Then directly RD is connected. RD is connected, then directly MOS is connected. This is the MOS which is connected. Source is common already. Now tell me at the input what you will get. Capital VI or small VI? Small VI. Why so? Because VGG is also shorted. This is also DC. So VGG is also shorted. So only small VI you are getting. And this is also your small signal output. We are not collecting DC output, we are not talking about DC, only AC output we are talking about. Everything is AC here. So AC we are talking about, right? VDD is shorter, so everything is AC now. So what did I tell you? How to solve these problems? What we will do? Let's remove this V node. So we know that there will be some R0 connected between drain and source. So this is the R0 which is connected. And this is our V0. What will be the current here? This R0 should be a bit. Here I should put R0. Tell me, what will be the current here? What should be the current? GMVI, right? VGS. GM into VGS. The current is GMVI. That's it. Right? Now, what you can see, there is GMVI current here. From V0 to ground, you see two resistance, RD. From V0 to ground, you see R0. So GMVI and from V0 to ground, you see two resistance, RD and R0. Are you getting this point? So can you replace this something like this? 
that uh, there is this GMVI current flowing. So from V0 to ground, GMVI current is flowing. From V0 to ground, GMVI current is flowing. This is small VI. Okay, this is small VI. From V0 to ground, GMVI current is flowing. And from V0 to ground, you are having R0 resistance and RD resistance. So R0 parallel with RD. And this is your V0. Now this GMVI current is flowing from R0 parallel with RD. This GMVI current is flowing like this. R0 parallel with RD. So what will be your V0? V0 will simply be minus GMVI into RD parallel R0. So what will be your V0 by VI? All, all of these are small signal. All of these are small signal. We are finding small signal gain actually. So V0 by VI would be minus GM RD parallel R0. That's it. This is what is called small signal gain. Small signal gain. Small signal gain. V naught by VI we found. V naught by VI. What did we do? GMVI current is flowing. That current is flowing from RD parallel R naught. That's it. That current is flowing from. Then we wrote down the value of V naught. V naught by VI minus GM RD parallel R naught. So this was the first thing that we found. That is small signal gain. Second thing they can ask is small signal output resistance. Small signal output resistance. They can ask this thing. So they will just make this diagram. They will make this diagram because we are talking about small signal. So everything here will be small signal. So they will make this diagram. They will not give you this. And they will ask you what is the resistance seen from here. This is known as small signal output resistance R naught. This is what they can ask. What you will do? What did I tell you? How to find the resistance? How to find a port resistance? What did I tell you? Short circuit or open circuit basically nullify the independent sources. Nullify the independent sources. What is the independent source? V in. V in is an independent source. Nullify this. So V in will be shorted. Is there any other source? No. VDD is al already shorted. VGG is also already shorted because that is DC. VDD and VGG are already shorted because they are DC. And now small signal V in is also shorted because that is an independent source. So V in is also shorted. Now tell me what is the current here? What is the current here? 0 ampere. Right? The current is 0 ampere because VGS is gone. VGS is 0. Gate to source voltage is 0. Current is GM VGS. VGS is gone. So current is 0 ampere. So simply this MOS will be open circuited. That's it. So there is no use of this MOS. So from V0 to ground, what do you see? From V0 to ground, what do you see? From V0 to ground, you see RD parallel with R0. That's it. This is your V0. What did you do? You short circuited the input voltage so if input is gone vgs is gone so mos is replaced with the open circuit so from v0 to ground you see rd from v0 to ground you see r0 so from v0 to ground you see rd parallel r0 and from here you need to tell the resistance so what is your output resistance that is rd parallel r0 that's it now the second thing they can ask you is the current gain not the second thing actually it is the third thing Third, they can ask you is the current again. So what do you mean by current gain? This is your I in and where will be your I out? So for I out, I should make this I hate. So this will be your I out. 
or in the opposite direction it can be they will give the arrow it's not that they will ask you what is the current gain they will give the arrow whether they want i out to be in this direction from right to left or left to right so we are assuming from left to sorry from right to left what will be your current gain tell me what is your i in you already know it is 0 ampere so no matter whatever the i not is the current gain will be current gain that is i not by i in we already know what is i in i in is 0 so current gain will be infinity this is shown as a i current gain will be infinity so no matter whatever the, the direction we give we already we always know for a common source amplifier the current gain is infinity for a common source amplifier current gain is infinity because input is applied at gate if input is applied at gate then input current is zero if input current is zero that means the gain will be infinity what was the output resistance rd parallel r node you don't need to mug it up you will okay simply remember input is applied at gate if input is applied at gate vgs is shorted so there is no current in the most so only rd parallel r node will come that's it what was the gain? Gain you will also remember how GMVI current is flowing. So that GMVI current will be flowing in RD and R node. So RD parallel R node, the GMVI current will be flowing. So gain will be minus GM RD parallel R node. That's it. Well and good. Now one more thing they can ask that is input resistance. This is all small signal output resistance. This is also small signal current gain. This is also small signal input resistance. So I should write small signal current gain. All are small signal only. Small signal current gain. This will be small signal input resistance. Tell me what should be the small signal input resistance. You can draw the circuit once again. So here you need to find R in. What you will do, you will apply a Vx and get Ix out of it. Your R in would be Vx by Ix. Forget about Vx, I know one thing that my ix is 0 so my rn would be infinity only so my rn would be infinity for a common source amplifier input impedance is infinity input impedance is infinity and output impedance is rd parallel r naught so low input impedance and high output impedance well and good understood for a common source amplifier input impedance is infinity because current is 0 that's it now what is the problem with the common source amplifier so what was the gain of common source amplifier our target for using the MOSFET, our target was to get a higher gain. We got a higher gain because RD, this R0 value is very high actually. And RD value we can also set high. So this RD parallel R0 we can get high gain. But what is the issue? Let's check that out. So the gain we are getting is minus GM RD parallel R0 you can see. because Assuming that here lambda is 0. This we are assuming. So if lambda is 0 that means R0 is infinity. So if R0 is infinity that means R0 parallel RD will be infinity parallel rd and what is infinity parallel rd that is rd only so this is what we are assuming so we are assuming here or you can say rd parallel r naught as well so there is no issue with that the issue is with gm so what is gm gm is root 2 mu n c x w i l id there were how many formulas of gm three formulas what was those formula one was very straightforward mu n c x w i l vgs minus vt what was the second one 2id vgs minus vt 2id upon vgs minus vt that was the second formula what is the third formula root 2 mu n zx w i l into id and this rd is there so now this is your av right this is your gain now gain your gain is the function of id and your id is the function of temperature so if the temperature changes your id will change and your id will if id changes 
then your gain will change and this is not, not what you want you want a constant gain it's not that at some time my mic will be giving you this much of amplification and at some time it is giving you this much of amplification are you getting this point you do you want a constant sound it's not that at some time you are getting high sound and at some time you are getting low sound then medium sound you want a constant gain let's just assume because of some temperature my id rises here in this one my id rises so what will happen if id rises then this gain will rise and if the gain rises then you will hear a higher sound and because of temperature if id gets low then you will hear a lower sound and this is what not you want you want a constant sound so that temp problem is the dependence on id are you getting this point so you are not getting a constant gain so this is the problem and uh, what else we can say yeah you i hope you are remembering the formula of gm because that is very important right so basically your function is your av is depending on temperature and this is not you want so because of temperature change the gain can change and this is not desirable yeah one more thing i wanted to ask you what is this id small signal or large, large signal what is this id small or large large signal right because i told you gm is a dc parameter gm is a dc parameter when you find gm what formula did you use id equals to mu n c x w by l vgs minus vt whole square then using this formula only you go to this formula so id is dc here that is the dc current and one more thing you have to remember here is that with the increase in temperature id increases how did you come up to this that we will study in device physics you don't need to understand here because that will take around 30 to 35 minutes if id increases sorry if temperature increases id increases that you need to remember what if someone asks you because but that is very rare no one will ask you these things but just for your reference id is proportional to the temperature if temperature increases id increases okay so that is the problem now how we will eradicate this problem that is the thing so this is how we are eradicating this problem we are using a diode connected load here what we were using we were using a rd value now instead of rd instead of rd we are using this configuration so what changes it will bring let's check that out this is known as diode connected load okay let's not uh, what should we do okay i should make a line like this this is diode connected load no need to do the dc analysis because we know using the dc parameters only using the dc biasing only mosfet is working in saturation region only so we are not doing the dc analysis we will only do the small signal ac analysis small signal ac analysis small signal let's do it on next page only small signal analysis or ac analysis you can say so let's copy this circuit
So if you are doing the small signal analysis, what will happen? VDD will be shorted. This VDD will be shorted. And in the input, you are having only the small signal. You are only having the small signal. For now, for now, I am assuming, for now, I am assuming, assuming lambda is equal to 0. This is what I am assuming for now. Tell me one thing. What will be the current in M2? What is the current in M1? Tell me. That is GM VI. That's it. GM, GM1 VI. GM1 VI. Small signal it is. So I am writing GM1 VI. What will be the current in M2? What will be the current in M2? What is the VGS of M2? VGS of M2. VGS of M2. That is 0 minus V0. Right? So, what will be the current? Min minus GM V0. Right? Minus GM V0. Or you can say in the upward direction, GM V0. Are you getting this point? Let's just see this is a MOS. Here the potential is A, here the potential is B. If I am writing the current in the downward direction, if I am going this way, so I will write GM A minus B. And if I am writing the current in upward direction, what I will write? GM B minus A. Are you getting this point? This is happening only for small signal. This is small signal current. Everything is small signal here, not large signal. You can't say, sir, from source to drain, the current will not flow. That is the case in case of large signal. In case of large signal, drain to source only current will flow. But in small signal, the current is very small. So it can flow from source to drain as well. So you, you will not think, sir, how the current is flowing from source to drain. It can flow because this is a small signal. In actual, there is a large signal current. Let's assume there will be some 2 milliampere current that is already flowing from up to down. That is large signal current. And this small signal current GM B minus A, that will be some 2 micro ampere. So that will not affect our DC operating point. This point I have already explained to you. So large small signal current can flow from down to up or up to down. You don't need to think that MOSFET will be turned off. Turning on MOSFET or turning off MOSFET depends on DC biasing, not on AC. Turning on MOSFET or turning off the MOSFET depends on that DC biasing, not on AC. So in case of AC analysis, we no, don't need to think whether the MOSFET is on or off. Because that we have already seen in the DC bias. We have made the DC bias such that the MOSFET is on and it is working in saturation region. Now there is very small signal. So because of this small signal, our DC bias is not getting affected. Are you understanding this point? Are you connecting this point? Right? So current in upward direction will be, we are going from upward direction. So from lower node to this node we will go, upward direction. So GMV node. In upward direction, we are having GMV node current. Right? In upward direction, we are having GMV not current. So, in both M1 and M2, same current is flowing. Because lambda is 0. There is no R0 connected. So, both in M1 and M2, same current is flowing. Right? And M1 and M2 are having same current. That means, this is GM2. That means, GM1 VI is equal to minus GM2 V0. That's it. So, what is your value of V0 by VI? That is minus GM1 by GM2. This is your small signal gain. This is your small signal gain. Now, what did you understand here? Let's write down this gain once again. So your gain is minus GM1 by GM2. What will be your GM1? That will be 2 mu n c o x w y l i d 1 divided by root 2 mu n c o x w y l i d 2 a v also this can this can vary because gm1 is for transistor m1 and this is for transistor m2 so mu n c o x 
डब्ल्यू बाई एल कैन वेरी एक्चुअली इट्स नॉट दैट म्यू एंड सुल वेरी बिकॉज दे आर कॉन्स्टेंट पैरामीटर ऑलमोस्ट कॉन्स्टेंट दे आर ऑल्सो नॉट कॉन्स्टेंट दैट दैट इज वेरी इन डेप्थ ऑफ डिवाइस फिजिक्स नो वन विल आस्क्यू दिस बट म्यू एंड सुक्स यू यू कैन कंसिडर दे आर कॉन्स्टेंट पैरामीटर्स बट डब्ल्यू बाई एल कैन चेंज दिस कैन हैव हायर डब्ल्यू बाई एल दिस कैन हैव लोअर डब्ल्यू बाई एल सो डब्ल्यू बाई एल कैन चेंज विथ एंड लेंथ यू कैन चेंज म्यू एन इज द मोबिलिटी दैट इज कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर एन इलेक्ट्रॉन इवन सी एक्स इज कॉन्स्टेंट सो डब्ल्यू बाई एल कैन चेंज सो दिस इज द गेन नाउ हेयर वट डू यू सी इन दिस सर्किट द आई डी करंट वॉट इज आई डी करंट लार्ज सिग्नल डी सी करंट आई डी इज डी सी करंट सो हेयर वॉट यू कैन सी आई डी वन इज इक्वल टू आई डी टू बिकॉज ओ कंप्लीट मोस्ट विल बी हैविंग द सेम करंट आई डी वन इज इक्वल टू आई डी टू इज इक्वल टू आई डी हेयर द लार्ज सिग्नल डी सी करंट इज सेम is equals to id so what do you get your av is only depending on w by l that's it and w by l is on your hand you can change w by l you can keep any value of w by l you want are you getting this point id1 was depending on temperature but w by l doesn't depend on temperature W by L is not a function of anything, right? So this here you are getting constant gain, and this is what we wanted. Constant gain. So we wanted a constant gain, and by using this diode connected load, we have achieved this. What did we do? We used the diode connected load. What did we? What did we get to know that the current will be GMV node upward direction, GMV lower direction. So here we have got the gain. And if GM two and GM one are equal, the gain would be one only. That's it. Now write down the gain for this configuration, considering lambda is not equal to zero, right? Considering there is some R naught, so we will write down the gain. We will also find many other things. We will find uh, that uh, uh, input resistance, output resistance, everything we will find. So now we are going to write the gain, considering that. Uh, Lambda is not equal to zero. That means R not R not is available. Mole signal. Why is this lagging? Mole signal gain. It started lagging again. Okay, I will have to pause the video. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it started lagging. Now it is working fine, I guess. So, what was our circuit? This is our output. this is our output here we will be having r not 2 right r not 1 this is m1 and this is m2 so here we are having r not 1 this is vdd this is vdd which is grounded vdd is grounded here you can see which is grounded now between here between drain to source you are having r not 1 here what you will have this is also grounded because vdd were connected here at both of the side so both vdd are grounded now between source to drain you will have r not 2 as well but this is source this is source what is drain drain is grounded so this is also grounded so r not 2 right now tell me one thing what is the resistance you see from here in upward direction Okay, let's not go by the resistance. Okay, this is V not. What is the current in upward direction? G M V not. This is V in. What is the current in downward direction? That is G M V in. Now you have to write the simple K C L at this node at V not. 
सो के सी एल एट वी नोट वोट विल बी और के सी एल एट वी नोट सो फ्रॉम वी नोट यू सी जी एम वी नोट गोइंग आउटसाइड दिस इज जी एम टू वी नोट एक्चुअली एंड दिस इज जी एम वन वी नोट जी एम टू वी नोट गोइंग आउटसाइड देन यू सी जी एम वी नोट गोइंग डाउन वर्ड जी एम वन वी नोट गोइंग डाउन वर्ड वट एल्स डू जी एम वन वी नोट नोट इट्स नॉट वी नोट दिस इज वी जी एम वन वी इन गोइंग डाउन वर्ड वट वट एल्स करंट डू यू सी दिस करंट वी नोट बाई आर नॉट टू एंड दिस करंट ऑल्सो वी नोट बाई आर नॉट वन प्लस वी नोट बाई आर नोट टू प्लस वी नोट बाई आर नोट वन इज इक्वल टू जीरो होल करंट आउट आर आउटवर्ड करंट आउटवर्ड करंट जी एम टू वी नोट वी नोट बाई आर नोट टू वी नोट बाई आर नोट वन जी एम वन वी इन वी इन वन राइट सो योर वी नोट वुड बी जी एम टू प्लस वन अपॉन आर नोट टू प्लस वन अपॉन आर नोट वन इज इक्वल टू माइनस जी एम वन वी आई राइट टेल मी वोट डू यू राइट वोट यू कैन राइट अबाउट दिस जी एम टू पैरल आर नोट टू पैरल सॉरी जी एम टू प्लस वन बाई आर नोट टू प्लस वन बाई आर नोट वन वोट यू कैन राइट यू कैन राइट वी नोट बाई वन बाई जी एम वन वन बाई जी एम टू पैरल आर नोट वन पैरल आर नोट टू आर यू एग्रिंग टू दिस पॉइंट इज इक्वल टू माइनस जी एम वन वी आई आर यू एग्रिंग टू दिस पॉइंट हाउ डिड आई राइट इट आई टोल्ड यू वन थिंग v by r1 plus v by r2 if this is the same not like that yeah you can i told you in the previous lecture only right if there are lower resistances written like this v by r1 plus v v by r2 so what you can write v by r1 parallel r2 right this is what you can write so here the same thing is happening This is V not by GM GM two V not by one upon GM two parallel R not one parallel R not two. Are you getting this point or not? I will explain once more one last time. So this is V not into GM two. So what I can write V not upon one upon GM two. This is V not into one upon R not two. So V not upon R not two plus V not upon R not one. This is what I can write. So what I can write V not upon R not one parallel R not two. Parallel one upon G M two. This will be used again and again. So I will not be explaining again and again. I hope you will be comfortable with this. V not upon one upon G M two. V not upon R not two. V not upon R not one. So you can write one upon G M two parallel with R not two parallel with R not one. Well and good. Also you can verify by the unit as well. R is the resistance. This is resistance ohm. This is also resistance ohm. GM2 is transconductance del ID by del VGS. So 1 by GM2 will also be resistance. And V by R, V by R that will be current. Voltage by resistance will be current. GM VI is a current only. So current equals to current. And resistance parallel with resistance parallel with resistance. So all are resistance as well. So V by R is equals to current. That's it. This is how you can verify as well. So V not by VI. What will be your V not by VI? From here, you can directly see your V node by V I is minus G M one into one by G M two parallel with R node one parallel with R node two. That's it. This is your V node by V I. Small signal gain. And if R not one and R not two are infinity, that means they are very large. If R not one is equal to R not two is equal to infinity, then what will be the gain? Gain will be minus G M one by G M two. Look, no complex circuitry, nothing, just simple current. No circuitry you need to draw. वो सब T मॉडल पाई मॉडल नथिंग यू नीड टू ट्रो सिंपली बाई करंट इक्वेशन यू आर राइटिंग इट एंड वंस यू आर कंफर्टेबल विल ऑल दो थिंग्स यू विल बी राइटिंग इट वेरी वेरी क्विकली नाउ आई विल टेल यू वन मोर मेथड ऑफ दिस आई टोल्ड यू वन थिंग 
इफ दिस इज द सर्किट दिस इज ऑल्सो ग्राउंडेड दिस इज ऑल्सो ग्राउंडेड लाइक बेसिकली बोथ आर शोर्टेड देन वॉट इज द रेजिस्टेंस यू सी फ्रॉम हेयर दैट इज वन बाई जी एम पैरल आर नोट डू यू रिमेंबर इट इन द लास्ट लेक्चर इट सेल्फ आई टोल्ड यू द रेजिस्टेंस फ्रॉम डाउनवर्ड वन बाई जी एम पैरल आर नोट सो वी नोट कैन सी फ्रॉम वी नोट टू ग्राउंड फ्रॉम दिस नोट टू ग्राउंड फ्रॉम वी नोट टू दिस नोट सो फ्रॉम वी नोट टू ग्राउंड यू सी वन बाई जी एम पैरल विद आर नोट इट्स नॉट नेसेसरी इट शुड भी ग्राउंडेड द नेसेसरी कंडीशन इज बोथ शुड भी शोर्टेड This is the necessary condition that both should be shorted. So V not two, and now this is grounded as well. So now you can see from V not to ground, I see one by G M parallel with R not. Say yes or no. And one more, I can see from V not to ground, I can see R not one as well. So what I can say from V not to ground, I can see R not one parallel with one by G M two parallel with R not two. Say yes or no. From V not to ground, I can see one by G M two parallel with R not two. Also from V not to ground, I see R not one as well. So what I can say from V not to ground, I see R not one parallel with one by G M two parallel with R not two. Yes or no? Right. So let's see the method two. What is the method two? This is your V not from V not to ground. You see this much of resistance. Now this this transistor is having V in. So that is driving G M one. V in current. So here G M one V in current is flowing through R not one parallel with R not two parallel with one by G M two. This was your transistor. This was your transistor. It is having V in voltage. This was your M one. So the current flowing was G M one V in. And this was your output. From V not to ground, what did you see? You see a resistance which was R not one in parallel to one by G M two parallel with R not two. Say yes or no. You saw what did you saw? From V not to ground, you see R not two parallel with R not one parallel with one by G M two. How? By this because both are shorted. This is also shorted. This is also shorted. So from here I can see one by G M parallel with R naught. This is the R naught. Well and good. Now this G M V I current is flowing through this resistance. Now this G M V I current is flowing through this resistance. So what will be your V naught? V naught will simply be minus G M into R naught one parallel with one by G M two parallel with R naught two. Into V I, basically G M V I current is this flowing. So what is your V naught by V I? That is simply minus G M one parallel with R naught one into R naught one parallel with R naught two parallel with one by G M two. That's it. In one line only, you will be able to write down the answer once you do the enough practice. So in the examination, this circuit will be in front of you. So what you will see? Okay, from V naught to ground I C. One by G M two parallel with R naught two parallel with R naught one. What is the current G M V in? So that current will be flowing through that resistance. So the gain would be minus G M one into one by G M two parallel with R naught one parallel with R naught two. Within ten second, you will be able to tick mark the answer in the examination. That is my guarantee. If you do the enough practice, I will make you solve fifteen to twenty questions. Not fifteen to twenty more than the, this. Every single possible configuration we will be solving. So after that, you will be writing the answer very very quickly. Are you comfortable with all this? Minus G M one into one by G M two parallel with R naught two parallel with R naught one. Well and good. Let's find more quantities. What we can find? We can find output resistance. So tell me what will be the output resistance? What will be the output resistance for this? R naught one parallel with R naught two parallel with one by G M two. Why so? Because this V in will be shorted. If this V in is gone, that means there is zero current. So from V naught you only see R not one parallel with one by G M two parallel with R not two. So what will be the output resistance? That also you can write. For output resistance, small signal output resistance we are talking about. So basically they will be giving this circuitry only.
and from here they will be asking you small signal output resistance R note. This is what they will be asking. So what you would do, you will short circuit that V in. Now what you will say from V note to ground, here I see R not one. From this V note to ground, from this V note to ground, I see one more R not two. And here I see one by GM two. Here I see one by GM two because this is also grounded. This is also grounded. So from V naught to ground, what is your R naught two? From V naught to ground, you see R naught one parallel with R naught two parallel with one by GM two. This is the output resistance R naught one parallel with R naught two parallel with one by GM two. That's it. And there is this zero current, so it has no use. This is the zero current, so it has no use. This M one is simply acting as open circuit. M1 is open circuit. Only R R not one is there. So one by GM parallel with R not two parallel with R not one. And if there was R not one, there was no R not one and R not two. That means if lambda was zero, if lambda was zero, if lambda was zero, that means R not one would be equal to R not two would be equal to infinity. Then R not would be one by GM two. That's it. Right, so from V naught to ground, you would only see one by GM two, nothing R naught one and nothing R naught two. Right. Let's move on to the next amplifier that is common source amplifier with D generation. This is known as D generation. D generation resistance. This R S is the D generation resistance. Why it is used? What is the advantage? What is the disadvantage? Everything we will see. Now let's do the DC analysis of this. What we are doing? DC analysis. Okay, this is only the small signal analysis. Let's do the DC analysis here. So how will your DC analysis look like? In DC analysis, you will only consider VGG. This is VDD. This is RD. And this is your V naught. Now let's assume because of temperature, because of temperature, your ID slightly increases. Your ID slightly increases. This is the ID which will be flowing from RD as well from RS as well, because there will be similar current, right? In RD RS, there will be similar current ID. So. Let's assume because of temperature or because of anything, because of temperature, because of any parameter, temperature ID increases. So what will happen if ID increases? If ID increases, then this potential will also increase. If ID increases, then this potential, potential across RS, we can call this as VS. So VS will also increase. If VS increases, then what will happen? VGS will decrease. If ID increases, VS increases. If VS increases, that means VGS will increase, decrease. Because what is VGS? VGS is VG minus VS. VG is VGG. That is fixed. And VS is increasing. If VS is increasing, that means this potential will decrease and if vgs decreases what will happen to current what is the equation of current some constant into vgs minus vt whole square if this is decreasing that means the current will decrease the current will decrease what is the advantage the advantage is by some parameter if the current increases in your transistor then the current will not keep on increasing it will decrease increases then come down then again increases then come down so it can maintain the current will be maintained it's not that it will keep on increasing so because of temperature or anything if the current increases 
सिंस देर इज दिस डी जनरेशन रेजिस्टेंस दैट विल स्टेबलाइज द करंट सो इट इज स्टेबलाइजिंग आवर सर्किट सो वी आर हैविंग ए स्टेबल सर्किट स्टेबिलिटी इज अचीव So till now, this much information is more than enough for you. Later on, we will understand this RS is working as negative feedback. If it is working as negative feedback, that means it is stabilizing our circuit. So that we will study when we study the feedback topology and feedback amplifiers. So till now, that is enough. That if ID is increasing, your VS is going down. That means your VS is going up. That means your VGS is going down. That means your ID is going down. So if it increases by its own, it is coming down. You don't need to do anything. The circuit, the circuit is making sure that your ID doesn't increase very much. If it increases very much, your VS will increase very much. Your VGS will go down, so ID will go down. So, your circuit is making sure that your ID does doesn't increase infinitely, right? So, this is the advantage of degeneration. Now, what will happen to small signal gain? That we will see. What will be the input resistance? What will be the output resistance? Everything we will see in common source amplifier with degeneration. So this is the common source amplifier with degeneration. So now we are going to calculate the small signal gain. So for small signal gain, I am assuming lambda to be zero. Why I am assuming lambda to be zero? Because in exam as well, you will see lambda equals to zero. Because if you consider lambda not equals to zero, that means if you consider R not here, your expression will be very very bad. Like it will be very very complex. We will solve that. We will certainly solve that. But 99.99% chances is there that they will ask the gain for only lambda equals to zero and this is asked many times so even student remember the answer as well and i will tell you you will be also able to remember the answer but they will they ask only for the condition lambda equals to zero it is very rare that they can ask for lambda equals to lambda not equals to zero that means lambda equals to lambda not equals to zero right <laughs> that means lambda is some value like 0 0.05 so but it is very rare so majorly we, they will consider r not to be infinite so if lambda is zero, that what does that mean? That means your R naught is infinity. So here we are considering that case that your R naught is infinity. We will also consider the case where R naught is not infinity here. I will write down the equation and get to the final answer. But once I get, write down the equation here, you will realize why it is not asked because the expression will be very complex. So let's solve this expression once. So we are not going to draw any model, nothing like that. We only we only know the concept of current. That's it. We are going to find everything by the concept of current. That what will be the current here? Tell me. Vs is the small signal voltage. You can write this is the small signal voltage. Vs is the small signal voltage. Small signal voltage. So what will be the current? Current will be Gm Vs minus this source potential i don't know the source potential so i'm assuming the source poten potential to be vx so my current is gm vs minus vx so what will be your v naught now our target was will always be to write down your v naught equation for writing v naught equation you need the current this current you need so what is that current that is gm vs minus vx so what will be your v naught your v naught will be minus gm into vs minus vx into rd are you agreeing to this point current into resistance but since it, it is zero this potential is zero then zero into this potential sorry zero minus this potential that will be your v naught so v naught will be minus gm vs minus vx into rd well and good very easy current is gm vs minus vx so rd into gm vs minus vx minus sign will also be there so what will be your v naught that will be minus gm rd vs minus vx now you can write down the gain. The only problem is this Vx. The only problem is this Vx. So this is the problem. So we have to eradicate this problem. We have to eradicate Vx somehow. You can write down the Vx in terms of V0 as well or V in as well. The target is to eradicate Vx. How will you eradicate Vx? Some people, what some people will do? Some people will say that sir, this, this current is flowing through RS as well. So what I can write? gm into rs into vs minus vx is equal to vx and from here i can write down the value of vx this is also correct this is also good there is no nothing wrong in that by this also you will get the final answer what i did the same current is flowing through rs as well 
in most of an employer only you need to use your brain to write down the expression here my target was to eradicate vx so how i can eradicate vx the current is flowing through rs as well so gm into rs vs minus vx that will be the potential and that is equals to vx current into resistance this was the current into resistance is giving me the potential and that is equals to vx so from here i can find out the value of vx this is also good but that will take more calculation so what i can do what is the current in upward direction v0 by rd this current is v0 by rd say yes or no and what is the current here that is vx by rx vx by rs so what i can write the same current is flowing in the complete mosfet from rd rs and from mos there is the same current this current is same in the complete mosfet small signal current or large signal current the current will be same in the complete mosfet what is that current whatever it is but the current will be same so what i can write v0 by rd is equals to minus of vx by rs say yes or no are you guys comfortable with this upward current is equals to downward current so one is upward one is downward so minus sign will be there so v0 by rd is equals to minus vx by rs so what will be your vx vx will be from here what do you get to know your vx is minus rs by rd into v0 this is equation number 2 your vx is minus i rs by rd into v0 so this is a simpler expression now i will put this expression in this one so what is your v0 by using equation by equation 1 and 2 what was your v0 v0 was minus gm minus gm rd vs minus vx minus vx is plus rs by rd into v0 so v0 is minus gm rd vs minus gm rs v0 right we are just opening the bracket so this rd rd will be cancelled minus gm rd into v0 what will be your v0 1 plus gm rs this i am taking this side and it will be minus gm rd vs so what will be your v0 by vs that will be minus gm rd upon 1 plus gm rs that's it this is the small signal gain small signal gain small signal voltage gain right this is the small signal voltage gain. what was the small signal voltage gain if rs was zero if rs was zero if this was your circuitry if rs was zero if this was your circuitry What was the small signal gain at that time? That was minus GM into RS. That's it. Min this is RD. So that was minus GM into RD. Now if RS is there, then the game is, gain is minus GM into RD upon 1 plus GM RS. That's it. The gain is reduced by this factor. 1 plus GM RS. Previously, the gain was minus GM RD because the current was GM VI flowing through this. So the gain was GM into RD. That's it. But now the gain is reduced to minus gmrd upon 1 plus gmrs so the gain is reduced gain is reduced to minus gmrd upon 1 plus gmrs this is your small signal voltage gain what is the current gain here what is the current gain current gain ai that will be i out by i in there is no change in i in i in is still zero i in is still zero this current is still zero ampere that means current gain is still infinity there is no change in current gain what is the input resistance what is the input resistance R in 
input resistance input current is still zero whatever v in is there but input current input current is again zero your r in is still infinity so your gain is reduced it is reduced to gmrs g minus gmrd upon 1 plus gmr now the question is what will be your output resistance but before that let's calculate we have calculated three things gain current gain and input resistance now we are yet to calculate the output resistance so let's calculate the output resistance first then we will see the voltage gain considering r naught we will see that but let's calculate the r naught first what will be your r naught what you need to calculate this is what you need to calculate r naught from here they are asking you the resistance this you need to calculate can you say it is r d parallel r naught no you can't say that right why it is not r d parallel r naught because here now you are having r r s as well previously the output resistance was r d parallel r naught because from v naught to ground you could see r d and from v naught to ground you could see r naught now from v naught to ground you could see r naught r d for sure but from v naught to ground it's not necessary that you are seeing r naught there is something different and what is different is there that we will find out so for calculating the output resistance what you will do you will short circuit this so let's make this circuit once again this is the most you are having here you are having rs resistance this is shorted And this is your R note. This is your V note. And from V note to ground, you see R D. This is your R D. So from V note to ground, you see R D. And from V note to ground, you see one more resistance that is this R X. Look, this much of configuration is providing me Rx resistance. This I am assuming that this resistance is Rx. This much of configuration is Rx. So what will be my final output resistance? What will be my R out? That will be Rd parallel with Rx. My R out will be Rd parallel with Rx. Now my target is to find the Rx value. That's it. Did you understand? What did I do? From V0 to ground I see rd now i am saying from v0 to ground i see rx but i don't know what is rx but that i can find so my target is to find rx value now so what is my rx i guess i can go with this circuit only forget about this इतना तो बना ही लेता मैं इतनी देर में दिस इज योर आर नोट एंड दिस वाज माय आर एक्स आई नीड टू फाइंड आर एक्स आई कैन अप्लाई सम वी एक्स पोटेंशियल हेयर एंड गेट आई एक्स करंट आउट ऑफ इट वी एक्स पोटेंशियल हेयर एंड गेट आई एक्स करंट आउट ऑफ इट सो मे आर एक्स वुड बी बी एक्स बाई आई एक्स राइट नाउ प्रीवियसली वॉट वॉज है when this rs was not there this small rs this was this was not there and then what was happening that your vgs was zero then there was no current in this mos and there was no current in this mos if rs was not there if this if this source was grounded so vgs was zero if source was grounded vgs was zero so there was no current but now the source is not grounded there can be some potential let's assume this potential is v there can be some potential that potential we are assuming to be v So if this potential is V, then what will be the current in the MOS? In upward direction, the current will be GMV. Say yes or no. I am assuming this potential to be V. So in upward direction, the current is GMV. Say yes or no. Are you agreeing to this point or not? Right. So what I can write? I am applying nodal at Vx. Nodal at Vx. What that will be? So in upward direction you are having GMV current. Look, this is GMV current. What is the current you are having here? 
that will be vx minus v by r naught vx minus v by sorry vx minus v by r naught so yes or no vx minus v by r naught so what will be the equation ix plus gmv is equal to vx minus v by r naught say yes or no this is the ix current this is the gmv current so ix plus gmv current is equal to vx minus v by r naught say yes or no agreeing to this point what i can write ix into r naught plus gm r naught into v is equal to vx minus v this is our equation one now what is the issue the issue is v you need the expression vx by ix the issue is this v this is the issue so you have to eradicate this v how you can eradicate this v some people will apply nodal here that sir i will apply nodal here that v by rs plus gmv is equal to vx minus v by r naught from here i can find out the relation between v and vx that is good but that will take more time so what i will be doing just see this what is happening with ix this ix is coming then it will be divided into two parts in this part and this part so ix is divided into two parts that one part is minus gmv ix is coming minus gmv and the other part is vx minus v by r naught are you getting this point ix is being divided into two parts one in the most one in the r naught resistance after that what is happening the current is divided and then both current will come some current will come from here some current will come from here and both will be added and will flow here first ix was first ix was divided and then added so what is this current what is this downward current tell me what is this current this current is ix only basically this is the scene that there is some circuitry is there this ix current was flowing here and then there was this rs resistance was there so ix current was divided into this and then completely came here try to visualize it try to visualize this as a black box so this ix current came divided into this black box and then came out again are you getting this point or not ix current came divided into this black box and then again went out so this way i can make my calculation more easier so my v will be simply my v will be ix into rs that's it this will be my v so in the examination i will use my brain slowly as well and also accurately because their calculation will be as minimum as possible they will not ask you very tough questions in case of calculation they want you to think like that oh, ix is coming divided into two part and then one current so v is equals to ix into rs that's it now v i can replace here so by equation 1 and 2 ix r naught plus gm r naught what will be v v will be ix into rs v will be ix into rs is equals to vx minus v vx minus v that is ix into rs right so what will be what we are getting here r naught plus gm r not rs plus rs is equal to vx so what is your rx rx is vx by ix that is rs plus r not plus gm r not rs this is your rx so what else you can write it you can write it like this rs plus r not you can take common from here 1 plus gm rs into r not or what you can write this r not you can keep as it is plus from rs common you can take 1 plus gm r not rs right are you understanding this point Th these are also the ways this is also rx this is also rx 
here i put rs as, as it is i took r not as common so 1 plus gmrs here i put r not as it is i took rs as common 1 plus gmr not these are the other ways now some people what do they do approximately it can be written as gm r not rs look this is simple rs this is simple r not this is gm r not rs so gm r not rs is very much larger than rs and r not what we are saying is that gm r not rs is very very much larger than r not rs plus r not so approximately sometimes you will find only this much written gm r not rs are you getting this point sometimes you will find only written gm r not rs but you will have to remember this formula as well how you will you remember so let's write down what you need to remember your circuitry was something like this you will remember this circuitry what is the circuitry you will not remember this is the output resistance of something this is the input resistance of something you just remember the circuitry the circuitry should be in your brain because no one is going to ask you what is the output resistance of common source amplifier with degeneration now no one will no one will ask you they will give you a particular circuitry and they will ask you to find the resistance so i am writing to remember this you are going to remember because if you are a good designer you will remember this kind of things if you are going to solve the problems quickly there will be only two to three three things that i will tell you to remember if you remember these things then you will be able to answer very very quickly what is the first thing that i told you to remember till now that was this what is the resistance you see from here what is the resistance if this is also grounded oh, basically both are shorted so what is the resistance 1 by gm parallel with r not this is the one thing that i told you to remember from downward 1 by gm parallel with r not that's it now this is the second thing that i am asking you to remember if you don't remember it's okay you can drive it as well but if you remember if there is a big complex circuitry you can write down the answer in 1 minute not in 1 minute even in 30 seconds so this is the thing that i am asking you to remember this is shorted right this is r not and this is rs here now if they are asking you resistance from this side what is that resistance that is this resistance r not plus this resistance rs plus gm r not rs this is what i am asking you to remember to remember r e m e m b e r to remember why i am asking you to remember because it is very important it will save your time it will save your calculations so this is the only thing i am asking you to remember and at least remember this thing gm r not r s at least remember this thing okay so this is known as output resistance of common gate amplifier okay common gate amplifier common gate amplifier this is the output resistance of common gate amplifier so we will see it once again when we study common gate amplifier in common gate what do we do we apply input here and get output here so this will be the output resistance of common gate amplifier right so but for now we are studying common source amplifier with degeneration so we are calculating the common source uh, like we are calculating the output resistance of common source amplifier with degeneration so our output resistance was rd parallel with rx what was the output resistance output resistance was rd parallel with rx and what did we find the value of rx that is rd parallel with this is the value of rx that is r not plus rs plus gm r not rs this is your r not but again this value will be very large this value will be very large and this value will be very small previously what was the re output resistance r d parallel r not when there was no degeneration so r not is r not is up, uh, like generally r not is larger than rd rd is very small resistance that you can put r not is generally larger than rd r not is a very high value near to infinity so what happens approximately it is equals to rd here also this value is also 
this is also greater than r naught so this value is also very large so rd parallel with some very large resistance this is also approximately equals to rd so here your output resistance did not change much this is rd only nearly rd output resistance did not change much what was the gain gain changed gain was reduced to minus gm rd upon 1 plus gm rs what was the current gain that was same infinity what was the input resistance that was also same infinity so did you understand common source amplifier without degeneration and with degeneration we will compare both of them but before that let's find out this voltage gain considering r naught this is very very less important no one is going to ask you why so because the expression will be very complex let's check that out and you can write down the expression on your own as well first write down the current what is that current that will be gm vs minus vx this current will be gm vs minus vx and here you are having r naught this is your vs this is your vx so at uh, no this is not v naught this is not vs this is v naught so gm vs minus vx this is r naught this is rd this is rs so at what i can do i can apply KCL at V naught. So what will be my KCL? KCL will be GM VS minus VX outward current. What is the other output current? That is V naught by RD plus V naught by RD. Till this thing we have done already. There is one more outward current. That is V naught minus VX by R naught. V naught minus VX by R naught. That is equal to 0. What is the issue now? Vx is the issue. What is the issue? Vx is the issue. What is the current here? Vx by Rs. This is the first equation. What will be the second equation? Tell me one thing. V0 by Rd is equal to Vx by Rs. Are you sorry? V0 by Rd is equal to minus Vx by Rs. Are you agreeing to this point? What I am saying? V0 by Rd is equal to minus Vx by rs what is happening let's assume this current is minus v naught by rd this minus v naught by rd will be divided into mosfet and r naught then again added and then went down so this current is the same minus v naught by rd is coming divided into mos and r naught resistance then again came down are you getting this point right so v naught by rd minus v naught by rd is equal to vx by rs so our issue was what was the issue issue was vx so you can replace vx with minus rs by rd into v naught now by using equation 1 and 2 you will find out the value of v naught by vs and that will be very complex by equation 1 and 2 gm Actually, I found I found it in the rough notebook. Uh, even in the textbook, you will not find it. Nowhere in the textbook you will find it because this is not asked generally, right? Because the expression will be very complex. That's why it is not asked generally. Plus V naught by R D plus V naught by R naught you can say is equal to Vx by R naught is equal to okay forget it V naught minus Vx that is V naught into 1 plus Rs by Rd V naught into 1 plus Rs by Rd into 1 plus Rs by Rd upon R naught is equal to 0. So this is GMVS plus what V0 is having. V0 is having something really big. GMRS plus RD plus 1 by RD 
प्लस वन बाई आर नोट प्लस आर एस बाई आर नोट आर डी इज इक्वल टू जीरो Now this is the expression we are getting, right? V naught by V S we can write down. This is G M V S that is equal to minus V naught. This will be R naught R D. So you get G M R naught R S plus R naught plus R D plus R S, right? R not R D is the LCM. R S plus R not plus R D plus R S. Right. What is V not by V S? That is minus G M R D minus G M R D. Something is wrong in the calculation. Let me check. No, nothing is wrong. So minus G M R D into R not upon G M R not R S plus R not plus R D plus R D plus R S. Yeah. So this is the final expression. Okay. Minus G M R D. Into R not minus G M R D into R not upon G M R not R S. So yeah, this is the final expression of G N you are getting. Now if uh, R not is very large, what will happen? If R not is very large, then what will happen? So let's check. If uh, R not equals to infinity or very large. Then what will happen? Let me add a page. V naught by V S will be equal to this minus G M R D will be there as it is. R naught is very large. Let's keep it here only. R naught. We have to basically find the limit. R naught is tending to infinity. What will happen to this expression? This expression will be reduced to G M R naught R S plus R naught. That's it. G M R not R S plus R not because R D R S will be very low. R not is very large, so G M R not R S plus R not. This is very low. Like thousand, ten thousand plus ten, nearly it will be ten thousand only. So this is what we are doing. So this expression will be reduced to G M R not R S plus R not. G M R not R S plus R not. Now R not will come out. So R not R not will get cancelled. It will be minus G M R D upon one plus G M R S that we calculated previously. This is our V naught by V S, right? This is the gain. We calculated the output resistance considering R naught only. If R naught was not considered, consider what would be your output resistance? If R naught was not considered, what would be your output resistance? If R naught was infinity, your output would have been infinity only. Your output resistance would have been infinity only. Right? If R not was infinity, this would go to infinite only. But here we are considering R not, so this is the expression we got. Right? This much would be infinity only. This would be replaced with like your output resistance would be R D parallel infinity. That would be R D only. Right? If R not was not there, if R not was infinity, here we consider R not as well. Then we got to know this expression is there, but this is not useful. Only this expression is useful, and this also we calculated previously as well. right so i hope you are getting comfortable with the amplifiers common source amplifier we have studied first we studied common source amplifier then we studied diode connected load first we saw, studied common source amplifier when then we saw what was the problem with that what was the problem the gain was depending on id so then we studied diode connected load then we studied this common source amplifier with degeneration and the small signal analysis what was the gain we were getting minus gmrd upon 1 plus gmrs input uh, current gain was same input resistance was same the problem was with the output resistance So we calculated the output resistance. That was this R S plus uh, R S plus R not plus G M R not R S. Well and good, right? So I told you to remember this thing that 
the resistance we are seeing from here is gm r not rs let's check out one more thing in this lecture only although this lecture is getting uh, for around one and a half hour i guess so yeah let's check out one more thing uh, output resistance of common source amplifier with d generation just now i got a thought to solve this thing here with d generation considering lambda equals to zero what will be the answer the answer will, will be rd only but let's calculate it you will learn something new here i guess okay d generation d generation sorry yeah so this was our rd this was grounded this was the rs we were getting yeah so from here we needed to calculate the resistance r not right yeah so like uh, can you directly say it will be rd only that r not will be rd only can you directly say that no we can't directly say that because this can also give us some resistance lambda is zero that means r not is infinity but this can also give us some resistance no are you getting my point let's make this circuit once again this is your rd from here this is your rd from here i was calculating r not so my r not will be rd parallel with rx i need to calculate the rx value my target is to calculate the rx value so how will i calculate the rx value let's check that out Previously, I calculated the Rx value, but considering R0, there was R0 available, but no, now there is no R0 available. Now my circuitry is something like this. Here I will apply Vx and get Ix out of it. Now, this is your V, right? what is the current flowing here in upward direction that would be gmv say yes or no the current in the upward direction would be gmv now here gmv will be equals to ix only gmv will be equals to ix this is the equation one right gmv will be equals to ix what what will be the equation two the equation two would be v by rs is equals to ix this is the equation two v by rs this current v by rs is equals to ix what did i do i needed to calculate vx by ix my rx is vx by ix this is what i needed to calculate vx by ix but there is no use of vx here first we are writing down the equation that we know what we know gmv current will be flowing upward so gmv is equals to minus ix sorry gmv is equals to minus ix and v by rs is equals to ix this is what we got to know well and good then what do we understand here what we can do we can replace by equation 1 and 2 by equation 1 and 2 what will happen what i can do i can replace v with ix into rs I am replacing V with Ix into Rs is equals to minus Ix. So Ix will be GMRS plus 1 is equals to 0. So what did I get to know that here? My Ix is 0. 
Look, I took this problem just to make you understand the analysis. Like, let's just assume in the examination, this circuit comes in front of you, R0 is not there, then you will be puzzled there. What will be the resistance? Because you will see that this is not grounded, V is not grounded. You will see that V is not grounded. If V is not grounded, that means there will be certainly some current flowing through it. But the current flowing through it is zero. That we go to understand by this analysis. What did we do? We write down the current GMV is equal to minus IX, V by RS is equal to IX. So here we go to know that IX is zero. So what will be your RX? RX will be VX by zero. That would be infinity. That's it. So your output resistance came out to be. So your output resistance came out to be, which was RD parallel with RX. That would be RD parallel with infinity. So your output resistance is RD. Right. This is your output resistance. R naught is equal to RD. So from here you only see RD. But it feels like that there will be some voltage here. But the voltage is itself zero. Well and good. I hope you understood it. Let me put the charger. Then we will write down the conclusion of everything that we have studied. Common source amplifier versus common source amplifier with degeneration. So after now we will write down the conclusion. Okay. Yeah. So this was common source amplifier without degeneration and this is with degeneration. So what is the first point? Here better stability was there, right? Better stability. Because if ID was increases, if ID was increasing, then ID was getting down as well. Because VS was getting increased, VGS was getting decreased and ID was getting down as well. So better stability is there. Here if ID is increasing, then it can keep on increasing because there is no RS resistance which can take down the ID. So here less stability. Less stability. Second point, gain, voltage gain, V0 by V in, small signal voltage gain. That was minus GMRT. And what was the gain here? That was minus GMRD upon 1 plus GMRS. So here there was more gain. Here it is less gain. What was the output resistance here? R out. That was RD parallel to R naught. And what was the output resistance here? That was RD. Sorry. That was RD parallel to RS plus R naught plus GM RS R naught. Right. So these are the comparison. Let's review the lecture once again, what we have studied till now. Let's review all the slides. So we started with common source amplifier, then we saw what is common source amplifier. Input is applied at gate and output is we are getting drain. Then we saw the small signal analysis, we found the small signal gain. That was GM VI current was flowing from RD parallel R0. So the gain was minus GM RD parallel to R0. What was the small signal output resistance? VI was getting shorted, so RD parallel R0. What was the current gain? Infinity. What was the or input position that was infinity. What was the problem? It was depending on GM. GM was directly depending on ID. ID was the function of temperature. So if temperature changes, ID will change, the gain will change. And this is not desirable. So for that you use it, you using, you are using diode connected load. So in diode connected load, what did you find? GM V node current was flowing upward, GM1 VI current was flowing downward. So the gain was minus GM1 by GM2. Then we found out that the gain is now constant, which is depending on W by L, and W by L doesn't depend on the temperature. Then we saw the small signal gain. Considering lambda is not equal to zero, that means R naught is present. R naught is not infinity. So if R naught is not infinity, what we can do? We can simply apply KCL. So upward current, downward current, outward current, outward current. So all outward current are equal to zero. Then we found out the gain was minus GM parallel with resistance. There was second approach as well. So from this V naught node, what we, we could see? One by GM2 parallel with R naught 2 parallel with R naught 1. And the current was GM1 VI. So from there as well, we could find out that Again, what was the output resistance? Output resistance input will be shorted. So in M1, there is no current. M1 is simply open circuited. If M1 is open circuited from V0, what do you see? From V0 to ground, you see 1 by Gm2 parallel with R0 to parallel with R0 1. 
and if r not one and r not two are infinity, so from v not to ground you could see only one by g n two. Common sort amplifier with degeneration. R s is the degeneration resistance. So what is the advantage we are getting if I d increases because of the degeneration? We are getting the stability because I d decreases. Then we do the we did the small signal analysis considering lambda is equals to zero. Here we are considering lambda is equals to zero. That means r not is infinity. So we found out the gain. So for finding out the gain, we smartly wrote down the equation. What was the equation we wrote down? First we wrote down the current. Then we wrote down the V not value. V not was minus G M R D V S minus V X. The problem was V A V X. So then we found the relation between V not and V X. So what was the relation? V not by R D is equal to minus V X by R S. Then we found out the gain. The gain was minus G M R D upon one plus G M R S. This was the current gain. Current gain was simply infinity. Input resistance was also infinity. Then we found out the gain considering R not. But this will not be asked. This is very less important. Why it is very less important? Because the expression is very complex. This is the expression that we are getting. This is very complex. So there is very very rare chance that this will be asked. Then, but we can smartly do the analysis. This is what we are getting. Right? You don't need to mug it up in the examination. If they ask, you can derive it there. Then the then we are considering lambda uh, R not to be very large. Then what will happen? The gain will be reduced to minus gmr upon one plus gmr s. Then we found out the output resistance that we have to remember. R D parallel with some R X. So R X we have to remember. R X we found out V X by I X. The smartly what was the smart move we did here? That I X is equal to V S by V by R S. That was the smart move that we did here. So V is equal to I X into R S. That we put in the previous equation that we wrote by simply finding the node analysis. V X minus V by R node is equal to G M V plus I X. Right? So this we did. Then the output resistance we got is R S, R S plus R node plus G M R node R S. R S plus R node plus G M R node R S. This was the output resistance we uh, found, and that this we have to remember. Also, we found out the resistance of common source amplifier with degeneration, with degeneration, and considering R not is infinity, that means lambda is equals to zero. If lambda is equals to zero, it feels like that this will give you some resistance, but there is no resistance. Why it is so? Because we applied it, then we got to know that. This is the fixed value. Then it is fixed value. Then i x is equals to zero. If i x is equals to zero, r not is infinity. So r not we are getting is r not parallel with r d. I will give you one more intuitive approach. One more approach I will give you. Okay, of understanding this. You are finding output resistance. What you are doing? You are applying v x, and then you are. What you are doing? You are changing v x, and then you are getting what is the Change in i x. This is what you are doing, right? You change v x, then you see what is the change in i x, right? Are you able to understand this point? What I mean to say is that basically r x is change in v x divided by change in i x. This is how you can write r x as well. V x by i x was simply from zero to v x you increased. So whatever the change you did in v x. What will be the change in i x? This is what you need to write. Does i x depend on the change in v x? If you are changing v x, you are changing the drain potential, not gate potential, or source potential. If you are changing the drain potential, but the current is not even depending on the drain potential, the current will depend on v g s minus v t square. It is not even changing on the drain potential. It it is not even depending on the drain potential. so no matter whatever you change your ix the change in ix will be zero only so the resistance will be infinity now some people will have doubt sir then why in the previous case it was changing sir why in this case you were saying that it is changing now if you change vx what will happen if you change vx what will happen this current will change the current in r not will change if the current is uh, current in r not is changing that means this ix can change Because I X is depending on the MOSFET current plus the current in R not. What are you understanding this point? If I am changing V X, the current in MOSFET is not changing. The current in MOSFET, the current in MOSFET is the same. If I am changing V X, the current in the MOSFET is the same. The current in the MOSFET is G M V. That is not changing. But if I am changing V X, then the current in R not is changing. And the I X current depends on the MOSFET current plus the Current in R not. So here, your output resistance was something. You are getting some output resistance, but here you got the output resistance to be infinity because if you are changing V X, the current in MOSFET was changing. But sorry, if you are changing V X, the current in MOSFET was not changing because it was not depending on V X. 
the current in the MOSFET was constant. So, the change in IX was 0. That is why you put the output position to be infinity. If you did not understand this, you can do that. You can do by equation as well. Just the intuitive approach it was that if you are changing Vx, there is no change in the MOSFET current. If there is no change in the MOSFET current, then there is no point of the output position. Output position will be simply infinity. But in the previous case, if you are changing Vx, the ch there was no change in the MOSFET current, but there was change in the output, uh, this R0 current, the current which is flowing in the R0. So, there was change in the current flowing through R0. So, because of that, Ix was changing. And because of that, you got some output resistance. So, yes or no? Did you understand it or not? I hope you are understanding it. Okay. So, in the next lecture, what we are going to see? We are going to see the biasing. Best possible way of biasing a common source amplifier. Previously, what we have seen, this is what we have seen. This is how we are biasing. What is the problem in that? That we will see. And how do we eradicate that problem? Then we will eradicate that problem. Then we will do the small signal analysis of that biasing. And after that, what we will see? We will study Miller's theorem. Then we will see more biasing technique, self bias technique. So we will see those techniques and we will do the small signal analysis of those techniques as well. And with that, we will be able to complete our uh, common source amplifier. Okay, well and good. So let's meet in the next lecture. Thank you.